A healthier, happier life begins here. Welcome to Mercy Moments, a podcast by Mercy Health in association with True Chat. Did you know that there is a youth development program here locally that helps provide skills, guidance, and training for those between the ages of 5 and 19? Or that statewide, the program reaches well over 240,000 youths each year, which in turn helps prepare our young people for certain challenges and helps make them more productive members of society. Thanks for tuning in today. I'm the host of Mercy Moments, T. Allen Sealer, coming to you from Champaign County here at Chucha Studios in Urbana, Ohio. She is currently the 4-H Youth Development Educator here in Champaign County for the OSU Extension Office, a program that specializes in teen development, volunteerism, and livestock education. Please welcome to the program, Melinda Ryan. Melinda, welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here today. So we always like to start out by having our guest give us a little background on themselves. Well, I've been uh, with OSU Extension for 20 years now as a 4-H educator here in Champaign County. I grew up in Champaign County, uh, left in 86, went to Ohio State University, uh, got a degree in ag economics. Uh, Then I took the entrepreneurship Avenue for a while. Uh, My former husband and I started a trucking company with one truck, and by the time we sold it, we had 150 trucks and a couple hundred employees Mm. and uh, owned a pizza shop, a restaurant. So I've been into (laughs) a little bit of everything, but uh, I'm now in my dream job back here in Champaign County. So um, I love working with the youth and the volunteers that we have here. So do you still live in the area? I do, yep. So what made you pursue a career in uh, 4-H and youth development? Um, I was very involved as a youth in the 4-H program, and I showed cattle and sheep and hogs. Uh, I grew up on a small farm. My family farmed um, in other counties. My grandparents kind of spent a lot of time down there, so I just had a passion for the ag industry. As we talked about previously, the extension program has numerous uh, initiatives and programs, so much so that in fact, we had Sophia Carter on uh, from the extension office a few months back. But I'd like to today. I'd like to talk mostly about the 4-H program and um, and its programs and initiatives. So, from your perspective, uh, taking into account the types of things that 4-H offers, um, what do you consider the mission of the um, extension office? Um, our mission is to bring education to meet the needs of the local community. Um, Our program is 4-H Youth Development, and a lot of times when people hear the word 4-H, they automatically think animals, and that is so such a misconception. Um, Yeah, we are projects that a lot of the kids take are animals, but we focus on workforce development. We focus developing the individual, mental health. Uh, We do a lot of school programs. So we're everywhere throughout the year, not just at the fair. So what exactly are the criteria uh, for becoming a member of 4-H? To become a member, uh, we have two different programs. The first one is called our Clover Bud Program, and they have to be in kindergarten and age five as of January 1st through second grade. This program focuses on group development, motor skills. They do uh, group projects together. And basically, they learn about something and then learn to apply it once they leave a a location. So a quick example would be uh, we have a sound program that they can do during a meeting. They learn the different sounds. And then when they leave, they could be driving home and hear the sound of a truck and say, oh, hey, that's a truck or that's an ambulance. And they learn to apply the things that they learn. And then once they hit third grade or nine years old, they're eligible to take an individual project. We have over 200 projects that they can choose from. And uh, those vary from cooking, sewing, uh, cake decorating. We have a very large shooting sports program here in the county. We have mindful matter programs. We have financial programs. 
uh, projects that kids can take. And then, of course, there's the animal programs that they can take as well. So what are what are the general goals of the program? To allow kids to explore the things that they like and learn and grow and develop in those areas. Um, it's kind of a career development type thing. Um, a lot of my camp counselors that we have, they go into careers of teaching, nursing, all of our projects that we have and in our books they're career related and so the kids have an opportunity to learn job skills and things that they want to do in the future Um, I'm kind of excited we have a new project going on right now with our uh, teen programs Um, the Champaign County Ag Society or Fair Board asked us to take over our flea market that happens once a month in the county and our teen youth are actually running that now Um, my youth board is so they're learning job skills of reading a recipe cooking the food counting money without using a cash register or a calculator they're learning to balance books they're learning accounting all those job type skills that are going to help them in the future so how does one go about joining 4-H? They need to join a club and they can call the extension office at 937-484-1526. We can hook them up with a club. Our enrollment deadline each year is March 15th. And so, you know, our our deadline doesn't change year after year. Uh, So if they miss it one year, they can uh, surely jump in the next year. So, and and you guys have a book or a guide out as well, correct? Yep. There is called the Family Guide. Uh, We have hard copies in our office, or you can go online to ohio4h.org. And there is a flip book online that they can look at all 200 projects. It describes what 4-H is. It describes what all 200 different projects are. And they can pick and choose what their personal interest is. So where do most of the enrollees come from? They come from all over. I mean, it's kids here in Champaign County. We have over 1,200 youth enrolled in projects. Um, Our goal uh, in the next seven to 10 years is to hit everyone in five youth that age. Um, We also have another program that if they're not directly enrolled in a club, we have what's called spin clubs. And that's where we offer a specific program and we spend a minimum of six hours with those individuals on a certain topic or subject. Um, And that that point in time, they get credit for being part of 4-H as well. Now, and the program's also tried to focus more on equity as well, correct? Yeah, it is open to everybody. Um, If we have someone uh, maybe who speaks Spanish and is not real fluent in English, we also, you know, have interpreters that we can bring in for that. We have programs um, that if you think that you financially can't support Uh, support or belong. We have a lot of scholarships available. um, So no one is excluded. We want everyone to experience 4-H and be a part of the program. You know, most people don't realize that the general concept for 4-H actually started here locally, correct? Yep. It started, actually started in, uh, I'm sorry, Clark County in 1902. Abby Graham was born in Fletcher area. Uh, He was a professor at Ohio State. It started out as the Boys and Girls Club of America. And the concept was to teach young people things that they needed to know to be successful in life, to give them life skills. I see. And and today, other states have similar programs, correct? Uh, 4-H is all in all states. They're associated with all um, land-grant universities across of the United States. They're also in Japan. We have a Labo program, which is the same as 4-H in Japan. We have exchange programs with Norway, Japan, Puerto Rico, which is now part of the United States. But uh, when members here in Champaign County, Ohio, as they get older, there's a lot of other um, national and international opportunities for them to be involved in. That's a good question. So are the various programs connected in some way? Yeah, all the programs are uh, connected. What you need to do is join your local program. 
Um, for instance, we have a couple kids here that come from split family situations, so they may be with one parent here in Ohio for part of the year, and they may be in Montana with another parent. And so we allow cross membership in those states to allow that uh, child to be able to fully participate in the program. Well, that pretty much does it um, for the first segment. In the second segment, I would like to talk more about the events taking place each year, as well as some of the more specific programs associated with 4-H. We'd like to take this time to remind our listeners that all of True Chat's podcasts help pursue a common goal, to educate people by providing honest, open, and respectful conversations and information. To learn more about Mercy Moments, listen to the recap at the end of the program, and to search for previous episodes or find ways to listen, please visit us at mercymoments.org. Are you in need of medical imaging services? and look no further. For Mercy Health Urbana Hospital and its newly renovated Imaging and Women's Center, now offers everything from CT, MRI, and ultrasound to DEXA, nuclear medicine, and yes, 3D mammography. Also, our team of board-certified radiologists will work with your prescriber to provide accurate and timely results and treat your condition using state-of-the-art facilities and equipment. To learn more about medical imaging services, please visit us at www.mercy. Com. Welcome back. So our topic today has been primarily about the 4-H program here in Champaign County. And our guest today has been Melinda Ryan. Melinda, welcome back. Thank you. Glad to be here. Now, obviously, a big part of 4-H is the livestock program. So can you tell our listeners a little bit more about that? Um, well, the majority of our individual projects are livestock Um Whenever we come to the county fair, uh, it is the largest event here in Champaign County. It's eight days long. Uh, a lot of people take vacation. If you've ever been out to the fairgrounds, it's packed full of campers. So it's kind right. of everybody's uh, local vacation. Um, but we have, like I said, majority of our projects are animals, Um People sometimes raise their own animals. Sometimes they go buy their own animals. Uh, last year, we started a new program called New Beginnings, um, thanks to Todd Woodruff out here at Woodruff Farms and Dan Blind. Uh, they started a program where if an individual lived inside city limits or maybe they couldn't afford a project, those gentlemen are going out and purchasing the animals supplying the feed and then when the animals are sold at the end of the fair that money is deducted and then whatever's left goes back to the individual just like it would normally to anybody else so that's another way that we try to meet audiences that may not necessarily have the means to take an animal project animals um, I mean they're good therapy that people sometimes don't realize they teach responsibility you know, caring for them. So there's a lot of good that comes out in in teaching about animals. And the fair is a big part of 4-H, correct? It is, yep. Um, one thing, I mean, that's the goal to get everybody to fair, um, but all 4-H and FFA projects have to be completed before they're eligible to go to fair and exhibit them. Um, so that people a lot of times don't realize that. But um, so the kids have to do their work and complete everything before they get there. And to complete a project, they have to attend so many 4-H meetings. They have to complete a skill which kind of shows what their knowledge is of their projects, like what the parts are, if they know the cuts of meat, if they know, um, you know, some breeding traits, those type things about their animals. And then they also have to attend, which is mandatory in the state of Ohio, um, by the Ohio Revised Code, a animal quality cares program. And basically that talks about making sure that a good wholesome food product is put into the food chain um, that goes out to the general public. So what other type of events do you, do you hold throughout the year? 
Uh, we do several different events. We, As I mentioned earlier, we do a lot of school programs. One of my favorite school programs is called Real Money, Real World. And that's where we go in and teach the kids about finances. Basically, we put them in a scenario where they're in their uh, mid-20s. Some of them have college loans. Some of them um, went to school out of like a tech school, but we tell them the difference, show them the difference between being a high school dropout, getting a technical degree, getting a four years degree, or maybe going on and getting a doctorate degree, what those pay differences are, um, how those pay differences affect you later on in life as far as financial decisions, the type of houses you could live in, the type of cars you can drive. So we do um, four days of education and then on the final day we do a simulation and basically what happens the kids have a checkbook that they use Um, they during the week they've taught been taught what their gross pay is about all their taxes that come out what their net pay is and their goal is to visit all of these stations pay their monthly bills, and at the end, hopefully break even and have some money left over to be able to put in their savings accounts. And that program has so many aha moments. Um, The state of Ohio Treasurer's Office backs that. It's done uh, throughout the state of Ohio, and um, it's, it's a great program, you know, we hear things like, I am never having kids, they're too expensive. I'm going to go home and thank my parents for everything they do for me. Um, <laughs> we even break it down to um, that, okay, here's a $100 pair of jeans that you want your parents to buy you, and they're working for minimum wage. How many hours do they have to work to pay for that pair of jeans for you? And we'll break it down. And so we have a lot of eye-opening moments with that program. Essentially, you're saying there's a lot of non-livestock related projects besides just which agriculture and stuff like that. Absolutely. So there's another uh, program that we do, and uh, it's called Real Colors. It's kind of a personality type program. I'm certified to do it with youth and adults. I did it this year with all of my volunteers, advisors, um, but it's really fun to do with the youth because it gives them, in general, it tells them the type of personality they have. And then we go and we discuss how you talk about if this person is this color of personality, how you can talk to them or why they act the way they do. And I've done it with my camp counselors, and it really gives them a perspective of how individuals are different and why they act differently and how we can treat them and respect them as individuals. Now, you have a governing body or council, and who decides what? in regards to what programs to implement? Um, We try to do, we have a 4-H advisory committee. Um, I mean, ultimately the decision comes down to the 4-H educator in each county, Um, but we have a volunteer advisory committee. We run things by them because sometimes they're out in the county and see things that we don't see. Uh, We try to do a needs assessment. We talk to other partners Um, to see what the need is out there. And then we provide, again, we have all the resources of Ohio State University. So if there's a need in the county, we can go and get the resources and start a program here for whatever is needed. As far as boots on the ground stuff, how do you handle that? Is it through volunteers? For our, our local clubs, And depending on some of our school programs, we pull in volunteers, but we have over 270 certified volunteers. They have to be background checked because they're dealing with youth, and our number one priority is to protect our youth um, and make sure our youth feel safe and in a safe place. Um, But yes, we could not do it without our volunteers. Um, Very grateful for them each and every day. Um, If there's someone out there who has a passion, you know, for working with kids, you're an expert in an area, you know, call the office. You don't have to have kids involved in 4-H to be a volunteer. Uh, We have people who have volunteered for 52 years and they're still going strong and um, just because they they like it. So So how's it funded? 
Uh, we are funded three ways. We're funded partially through the county commissioners. We're partially funded through the state of Ohio, and we're partially funded nationally. Now, from the volunteer side, how what's the best way for someone to get a hold of you? Uh, best way, again, is to call the OSU Extension Office so here in Champaign County. We're located out at the Champaign County Community Center. And, again, that phone number is 937-484-1526. And once again, you guys have a website that kind of encompasses everything, correct? We do. And that uh, website is Champaign dot osu dot edu well that pretty much does it for the program today but before we go we always like to do a little segment that we like to call caring corner february is heart health month and bond secure mercy health would like to help celebrate this initiative so once again this year's event will be held at cohatch in springfield at 101 south fountain avenue springfield ohio 455 to zero. Also, the mobile mammography team at Mercy Health would like to remind everyone that they will be holding several events at various locations throughout the community in the next few months. No physician order is needed and walk-ins are welcome. However, to schedule an appointment, please call 833-626-6826. For these and any other event, or information, please visit us at www.mercy.com. We'd like to end the program today by reminding our listeners that our goal here at Mercy Moments is to promote local resources, awareness, and involvement. Therefore, if you have any comments related to past episodes or have suggestions for future programs, please contact us at T-A-C-E-Y-L-E-R at Mercy.com. That's capital T-A-C-E-Y-L-E-R at Mercy. Com. Once again, I'd like to thank my guest, Melinda Ryan, for being here. You can listen to Mercy Moments via ChuChat, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or anywhere else fine podcasts are found. For Mercy Moments, Mercy Health Urbana Hospital, and True Chat, I'm your host, T. Allen Sealer. And Melinda Ryan. Thanks for listening today. Stay healthy, Ohio.